Hi everyone, Messiah season again. Hallelujah. It keeps coming around and I'm really excited today to bring you a video um, which is the Hallelujah Chorus from Messiah. And um, this year I'm approaching it a little bit differently because this year instead of singing in it, I'm actually going to be conducting some versions, not of the whole Messiah, but of the Hallelujah Chorus with a couple of the choirs that I now work with. So while I don't really consider myself to be a conductor, I do wave my arms around um, in some hopefully useful manner. So, um, without further ado, let's crack on and get into it. Just before I do, I just always forget this astonishing fact, and I don't know why, but Handel composed Messiah in um, 1741, and he did it in less than a month. So, I think it was 21 days between August and September. Um, of 1741 and apparently he didn't eat very much and didn't sleep very much such was his mission to get this incredible work um, composed and ready to perform um, and in its early days much of the revenue that was earned from Messiah went to charitable co uh, causes that were close to Handel's heart so um, it's a wonderful piece of music and it's you know a mainstay cornerstone um, piece of music for many choral societies and therefore many singers. So here we go from the beginning I'm just going to work through from start to finish and I'll jump between the parts depending on who has the most important part at that stage so grab your score ideally if you go through and number your bars that will be helpful because I'm working with bar numbers um, and it's very difficult often to identify where you are because the text is repetitive to start with first things first pronunciation of the word hallelujah ideally a good H and then the first syllable of the word is really the most important syllable so it should always be hallelujah with the le being unimportant lu being less important than ha and ya being the least important of all so if you had to prioritize which syllable to stress always aim to stress the ha and lu can be slightly stressed but it's never hallelujah. Even if Handel wrote it so that it looks like that, that's not how you want to pronounce it. Handel actually was a brilliant English speaker, um, but it wasn't his first language. And you'll find in some of his settings that sometimes he emphasizes um, a word that isn't actually a great word to emphasize in English. Um, and it's the same with the word hallelujah. Sometimes he sets it in such a way that the lu becomes the most important so you just have to work hard not to ever overemphasize Lou. So here we go lots of talk not much singing let's get on with it. So first of all sopranos you actually have the tune here and you need to start nice and loud everybody needs to start loud so here we go. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. So what I was doing there was trying not to make Lou important, even when it comes on the strong beat. Um, also trying to make sure that the hurt starts nice and early. So you get onto the R ah vowel of hallelujah on the beat. So the hurt doesn't hold you up. So you hear the R ah right when the conductor is giving the downbeat there. The other thing I should have said and I should have done, um, for a brief moment, altos, you get a tiny little bit of tune. Now, this does not happen often in this piece, I have to say. The alto part is possibly one of the dullest parts to sing. Um, but by the time you get to the third iteration of the word hallelujah, altos, that's your tune there. So the sopranos start with the tune. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Then the altos have it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. So for two whole 
iterations of the word hallelujah. Altos, you get to shine. And then the sopranos take over again. Hallelujah. And then just try and make sure that you put all of those vowels into the R space. Hallelujah. So you've got nice mobile dropped jaw um, and those um, vowels are all resonating evenly. Then um, altos, this is where your part really is not much fun. This is from bar eight now. Sopranos have the tune. Altos, I'm afraid you just have repeated. Hallelujah. You get very familiar with singing A's. Sopranos, you do. Hallelujah. Now, this is one of those cases in point. Sopranos, an F sharp for you on the highest note is always going to be a loud strong note for you so you have to work hard not to overemphasize the lu there if anything the f sharp on lu needs to be the quietest note in that phrase so if you think about the think of it doing a diminuendo through the phrase so that that's not the note that sticks out you don't want it to sound like which you hear a lot um, and it's a shame because that's not how the phrase is supposed to be structured, I don't think. So working hard to make sure that that top F sharp isn't the loudest note in the phrase. And that, that's the same for all of those ones in that next um, section from bar 8 through to 9, 10, 11, bar 12. So always going for the ha as the important one. Essentially, the next part of the um, tune is unison. So everybody has essentially the same thing. And it's, it's important text here. So I should have said, after those first couple of hallelujahs, you want to come back in dynamic so it doesn't stay loud. So you need to come back to mezzo forte, maybe even mezzo piano. And then this next bit of text really needs to pop out loud. So this is bar 12. For the Lord God omnipotent reigneth. So if you work towards emphasizing the word Lord, you'll get a really nice phrase shape. So you never want to emphasize the word the, which can happen. You can hear for the Lord God. Definitely don't want, want that. So if you go for Lord, that will shape your phrase for you. For the Lord God omnipotent and then rain is important. And then, um, and that applies to all of the parts. So you, you're essentially doing the same thing there. You, different parts jump to different parts of the octave, but it's essentially unison tune. Then bring the dynamic back down for the next bunch of alleluias, um, which essentially are just sort of accompanying interludes really between the important bits of text here. So the sopranos have the tune. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. And again, you're going to make sure that the F sharp isn't the one that sticks out. Then in bar 17, um, the sopranos in the score have a rest here. Um, and the tune is taken by the altos, tenors and basses singing in unison. However, because it drops to a very low G, which even for... Um, altos often is a bit of a stretch. Sometimes it's really nice to add the sopranos in there um, just to sing with the altos in that phrase, just because it is so low in the voice um, and they can get lost a little bit in the texture. So again, you're going to work towards the word Lord. For the Lord God omnipotent reigneth. Omnipotent. It's a funny one. You don't want it to um, sound like tent at the end. Omnipotent. Tent, tent, tent. It's kind of a mixture between e eh and a, uh, just so that it resonates nicely. Um, and if you are going to emphasize 
anything in that word, it would be ne omnipotent, Reina. And then, Altoids, your shining moment. In bar 19, you have the tune in the hallelujahs. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. I'm afraid that's all it is, but it's your moment to shine. Um, and all the other parts could just pipe down a little bit there and let you really shine with the tune at that point. Sopranos, you take over with the For the Lord God tune. So this is bar 22. For the Lord God on the And again, because you're now going higher, you just need to find lots of lovely ah uh, space for all of that. It's it's high in the voice. Don't try and sing um, the correct vowels. And especially as you're jumping around that octave, just keep everything really, really open. And um, just let me sort my music out. Got the fan on because it's hot and everything's trying to blow away. There we go. Hopefully that will hold it. Um, so yeah, keeping all those nice R uh, vowels. The tenors are accompanying you um, during this bit. Um, so again, tenors. Hallelujah. Just make sure that you emphasize the ha and just get the, because your ha comes on a semiquaver, you just need to get it done a little bit early so that you get the vowel of the hallelujah on the um, semiquaver. So you've got one, two, hallelujah, hallelujah. If you put the H too late, the vowel then becomes late um, and it just all gets a little bit out of time. So tenors just get the H's, just, uh, just what's the word I'm looking for? Anticipate them a little bit. Um, uh, then what happens next? And then the tenors have the tune actually. So they've got hallelujah, so that's in bar 23. Tenors, you have the tune again there. Um, and then you have it in bar 25 when you do For the Lord God. So you are in unison with the basses. And again, just be careful that the isn't the important word, that you're working towards Lord as being the important um, word which will give you nice phrase shape and altos and sopranos really you're just accompanying there so just back off you're not the star of the show during that section then um, altos and tenors you have the next iteration this is bar 29 of the tune for the Lord God omnipotent reigneth. Again, just keeping your vowels in a nice open R uh, space and try not to make the upper um, G louder than the lower G. Now, I know that's a really stupidly big ask, but it means not singing too loud at the beginning of the phrase. So your low G needs to be the same volume as, I don't know if you can hear that car alarm going off. The low G needs to ideally be the same volume as the upper G. It's a very, very difficult effect to achieve. And then you've got the new tune, which is the kingdom of this world. Now this is um, hymn-like, I suppose. So it is um, chordal. The parts aren't moving um, contrapuntally and all over the place, independently of one another. You're all singing chords together. The sopranos have the tune. It needs to be really, really quiet intense and passionate because you've got a huge um, forte phrase coming up. So in order to prepare for that, so that that's the exciting part, the kingdom of this world needs to be super, super quiet and intense. So the kingdom of this world. So again, be careful that the isn't the important word here. The kingdom of this world um, is 
the phrase shape that you're going for. The kingdom of this world. And if you can manage to everybody make sure that world lasts for four whole beats, so the er uh vowel lasts for four beats, and then the d happens on the first beat of the next bar on the bar line of bar 36, um, then that's really exciting. Then you have to keep it reined in, keep it quiet for is become and that's when you can all let rip for the forte the kingdom of our lord and of his christ and of his christ so that's the climax in many ways of the whole piece and um, that's the message of the whole piece so um if you can try not to crescendo through is become keep it really reined in and then let rip for the kingdom of our lord sopranos i'm afraid you have the tune there um sorry everybody else so the sopranos have the kingdom of our lord breath and of his christ and of his christ so i think your important words the kingdom of our lord and of his christ and of his christ they're your important words so if you go for those um we'll get beautiful phrase shape and because everybody's singing the same thing at the same time it's really important that all the parts do that same shaping of the phrase then um we have um a canonic um structure coming up started by the bases and he shall reign forever and ever so the bases begin this one uh, so it goes one two and he shall reign forever and ever then the tenors take over Then the altos have the tune and he now again here the sopranos aren't scheduled in for another um, couple of bars so the sopranos can help out there if the alto texture just feels a little bit thin at that point and he shall reign forever and ever sopranos um you have the last iteration of this tune and he shall reign forever and ever and it's okay if he is really important so that's your top a and he shall reign and you want rain to be important as well forever and ever and then the next bit king of kings so king of kings when you get to the long hello the cats um come to interject as well at this point we've had carol lambs and now we've got a cat singing along um when you get to the kings if you can come away so we have king of kings so you've got to hold that sopranos and altos for eight beats to let the tenors and basses come through because they're doing the um, forever and ever, hallelujah. So you just need to back off so on your long notes so that they can shine through on the forever forevers. Somebody's going to go and feed the cat, hopefully. And then um, sopranos and altos and lord of lords same thing there just back off because the tenors and basses have the tune so when you're singing your lords back right off so that the tenors and basses can shine through with the forever and ever hallelujah hallelujah and again tenors and basses just get those h's out of the way nice and early so that um you're on the beat for the vowel sound um this kind of pattern just repeats so just make sure again every time you have hallelujah that it's hallelujah and not hallelujah 
Um, sopranos, just remember to back off all your long notes so that the other parts can shine. In bar 61, there's a fantastic feature for the basses. Now, I haven't mentioned the basses much, and it's, I love to hear a strong bass part. So I really like it because the, the bass part is um, the foundation for all the harmony. I personally really think it's important that we always hear a really good, strong bass line um, because that's what everything else is built upon. You are essentially the most important part. I know us sopranos think we're the most important, but actually it's always the basses that are the most important part. Um, and here you have a really incredible feature where you are just acting like a corkscrew to build the tension and... Um, totally up the ante leading to the big final climax so you have you've got the tune with the tenors in bar 58 forever and ever hallelujah hallelujah and then the sopranos go off again oh sorry and Lord of Lords. now basses you have this fantastic feature where you're starting on the G sharp forever and ever hallelujah hallelujah and then you go up in the next one a semitone um forever and ever hallelujah hallelujah so you're just pushing up the tension with that semitone passage sequential um and it's really really important that we hear that because it really is where the, all the excitement stem stems from ah, bar 60 oh i've got my numbering wrong no i haven't 66 sopranos now you're up on your top g so just go for r shape Think the right vowels, but sing R uh, throughout all of that bit. Otherwise, it just can sound a little bit screechy. So you're going for resonance. We, we've heard this bit of text now several times. Everybody knows what the words are by now. So you can really focus here on singing loud and singing a really, really beautiful sound and maybe not having to work quite so hard on forming the words. Um, so just go for our shape and beauty of sound. So you've got breath, then at that point in bar 69, the basses have the tune at last. Um, so you have, uh, what do you have? And he shall reign forever and ever. So basses, that's your moment to shine. Sopranos, just back off a little bit. You've just got, and he shall reign. Tenors, and he shall reign. Altos, and he shall reign. So that's just fluff and filler. Let the basses shine at that moment. Then we go back to the um, sopranos having the tune in bar 71. And he shall reign forever and ever. Now then, this is where we have, and it's editorial, but it's, it's totally correct editorial. King of Kings forever and ever. We're building up to um, the um, finale, slowly, but we're getting there. King of Kings, everybody is fortissimo. So you're all doing um, uh, altos, tenors, and basses have the tune. Sopranos, you're just filler. So don't try and be the stars of the show. Let us hear the King of Kings forever. That's the altos having the tune. Um, and ever, and Lord of Lords. Um, sopranos jump to hallelujah, hallelujah. so again just be careful that the G's because we've modulated now make sure that the G's the loo isn't the loudest part hallelujah, hallelujah. you don't want that there hallelujah, hallelujah. 
So the hat is more important than the high note. Um, and then we're coming into our final run, almost. And he shall reign forever, forever and ever, King of Kings. Very important to get that cut together so that it's, again, slightly ahead of the beat so that the it is the thing that we hear on the beat. King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Um, everybody is really equally important during that bit. The sopranos have the tune, but it's marginal. Um, and he shall reign forever and ever. Bar 85 now. Sopranos, your King of Kings and Lord of Lords is an important statement, but everybody else is forever and ever, forever and ever is also really important. So again, um, everybody else is accompanying you at that point, but just make sure that it has nice shape forever and ever, forever and ever. And then the final iteration now, you need to have something left in the tank to do some sort of crescendo here. So this is your final run in. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Getting louder and louder. Then please observe that there are two beats of rest. I have heard performances where somebody comes in early here and a lot of conductors will make that two beats longer than two beats to um, just to, to um, emphasize this ph phenomenal moment. And it is, it's amazing. It's an amazing thing to sing. It's an amazing thing to go and watch. Um, so really eyes on your conductor at this point. You do not want to be the person that sings in the final rests. And then the final, and your conductor will want you to do a crescendo. So make sure that your breath took the whole of those two rests before that final, final phrase. And that in a nutshell is your hallelujah chorus going through bar by bar and trying to just give you an idea of what Handel's intentions were about who, um, who the important parts belong to at different parts along the way. And if you do that within your choir, um, you'll, you'll get much more interesting shapes and the repetition won't sound quite so repetitive. Um, it's a phenomenal piece of music and um, I just hope you have the opportunity to sing it for somebody this coming Christmas. Thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial today. As always, um, I love making content for you guys. So um, please, I'd love to hear your favorite Messiah story. Everybody who sings Messiah has got a story about um, Messiah and possibly even the Hallelujah Chorus. So drop me your um, favorite stories, things that might have happened during performances of Hallelujah Chorus or Messiah. Um, please click some buttons if you feel that you want to help with the making of these videos. Feel free to join as a member for a very small number of dollars um, and you can click the join button or the um, little button which buys me a coffee, I think it's called the super thanks button. Um, I'd be really, really grateful um, and I hope you enjoy your Messiah season. Bye!